I have moments where I cry. I have moments where I'm fed up. How did you deal with comparison in your battle with your eating disorder? Eating disorders are very competitive illnesses, but, but a huge part of it was reminding myself that I was the only one that could get better for me. So comparing myself to the girl or the guy across the table for me who might be eating a bit slower or breaking their food apart or whatever behavior they may be engaging in, by me also engaging that and comparing myself to them or to their body or to their place in recovery, I was only holding myself back. And so learning to focus on myself and know that I am the only one that can get better for me. It also really helped me to know that everyone is different and unique. If you lined 20 people up who all weighed the same amount none of them would look alike how do you ensure your own mental health is in check when you support so many of us so I've become really good at making sure I put myself first without sounding selfish I think self-care is really really important and so I'm really good at scheduling time into my day that's just about me and um, I'm also in a really good place where hearing your guys stories or experiences doesn't affect me or trigger me in any way yes I feel for you I I do get sad sometimes I don't even know if sad's the right word but I do feel for you and, and that can be tiring sometimes because I, I carry a lot of that but I'm also very good at separating, my, separating myself from that situation so what I do personally is making sure I spend time with my friends I spend time with my family and I spend time alone I love nothing more than just lying on the couch and watching YouTube videos or watching a series on Netflix and I really make sure I prioritize that time and also a lot of reflection I love to write I love to um, you know chat to people and kind of reflect on how my week's been and so I find that really helpful as well. What are you most proud of? I am most proud of being a survivor of mental illness. That may seem crazy to some people but I was so ashamed for so long and now I am so proud to have fought the battle I did and to be out the other side and to be able to use my story to give hope to other people. I can't be much prouder of anything else. Fighting mental illness is the most difficult thing. It is it is hard work. It is a choice every single day. It's a few steps forward, a few steps back. But I'm so proud to say that I did it. And I am also in a position now where I feel like anything that I'm faced with, I'm strong enough to fight it. So yeah, my battle with mental illness, but more importantly, coming out the other side and staying strong and fighting for my life and fighting for freedom is a thing I am most proud of. What helped you to overcome your eating disorder and anxiety? So I'm a big believer in getting professional help. I had an incredible dietitian, psychologist, psychiatrist. I did take medication and did a lot of therapy and, and had a lot of discussions and chats and practical activities around facing my eating disorder anxiety head on. I did exposure therapy, which I found really helpful. The core of my eating disorder was all really anxiety based. And so working on anxiety and was a huge part for helping me with both my OCD and my anorexia. They're all very intertwined. So yeah, I'm just having a really good support team around me, having really clear goals um, and motivations and, and reasons to recover really made a difference. And knowing that anxiety passes and that feeling is temporary and that it cannot harm me. My mind used to tell me that, you know, feeling that was bad and that something terrible was gonna happen and learning that that wasn't the case was really important. Did you listen to any particular songs in recovery that really helped you to feel better. Yes, I had two songs and they were actually both on my placemat. When I was in the psych ward, I made a placemat that I had for meal times, and on it was, you know, photos of my favorite people, my favorite things, and it had two songs. And one of them was The Climb by Miley Cyrus, and one of them was Survivor by Destiny's Child. I cannot tell you how many times I've listened to those, but I both, like both those songs just like spoke to me and, and really embodied kind of recovery and, and what the process was gonna be like. And, and gave me hope that I could get through it. Do you still see a therapist to this day? Yes, I do. I have therapy in an hour and a half. So I started seeing my therapist again probably about six months ago. Not for any reason in particular, apart from the fact that I've got a lot going on in my life with work and, and all the projects I'm working on. And so therapy for me looks a lot different now. I'm a big believer that everyone should go to therapy. I think it's the best thing ever. And sometimes I turn up and I'm like, I don't know what I want to talk about. And then like a million things come out. So yes, I go to therapy. And it's definitely not the same as when I went to therapy when I was facing my eating disorder and OCD. It was much more focused on that, whereas now it's much more focused on kind of life 
but yeah I still go to therapy and and I'm not ashamed of that in any way I'm actually really proud to still still go along to therapy and I still find it really really helpful and, and I walk out of there always with the spring in my step and feeling pretty on top of the world so just having someone to talk to without judgment and my therapist has been my same therapist since I was 14 so I've been with him for 10 years now so he knows me like completely being with me every step of the way and so I think it's really cool for him now to be working with me on more life stuff as opposed to my my mental health because you know he's been with me through that whole process and so for him to see how well I am now is really really cool but yeah he's he's the best how do you stay so positive I think it's a choice and I'm not gonna lie like I wake up sometimes or I have moments where I'm feeling real flat and real blah or overwhelmed or like Ugh, this sucks um, but I feel like I kind of just choose to be positive a lot of the time I think you guys see one side of life and I think that's really important to note that through social media you see kind of the highlight reel the good parts of people's lives but I have moments where I cry I have moments where I'm fed up or I'm angry at my sister I'm in her room currently she's gonna love me for it um, or you know I have a little bicker with my boyfriend whatever it might be that's also normal so yes you see a lot of the positive happy gen which I am most of the time but I'm also human so I have my moments where I'm feeling a little bit like Meh. why is this happening I find starting my days with gratitude really helpful or ending them with gratitude really helpful and just reminding myself that I'm in complete control of how my day goes and to use it to the best possible and so today the way I'm using that is by filming this YouTube video and then I'm going to therapy and then I'm probably just gonna chill out for the afternoon um, and not do a whole lot. And then I've decided tonight I'm gonna do a pamper session. So we're gonna, we're gonna paint my nails, do my nails, because we've got Jazz's movie premiere tomorrow. Um, and then it probably won't be tomorrow by the time this video comes out. Uh, I'm gonna like wash my hair, like do a face mask and just focus on me tonight. Do you think it's okay to talk to someone even though you've only been through little things? 100%. The fact that you wanna talk to someone about it shows that it's making an impact on you um, and you feel like you need to, to get that out. So I'm, like I said before, I think therapy is something everyone should do. I'm an open and honest book and I tell people how I feel because then they know how to best help me. So no matter what you're going through, through. If you feel like you want to share that with someone, then share that with someone. It doesn't have to be this big major event uh, for that to be something that you then are allowed to share with. I think everything's relative and everything's important to the individual and so if this is something important to you then please share that with someone. I think it will take a huge load off your shoulders. What advice for someone who struggles with accepting that their weight fluctuates? Well, you kind of said it, weight fluctuates. Weight's not the same, and weight doesn't tell you how amazing you are, how kind you are, how beautiful you are, what a good friend you are, how determined you are, etc. Your weight is literally just a number, and it does not represent you at all. Yes, I understand through recovery, depending on what you're going through, weight may become part of that. I know for me, I had to be weighed during my recovery process. I chose to blind weight because I just didn't need to know, didn't want to know. I also realized that whether my weight went up or down or stayed the same, I was angry, so it wasn't helpful for me. My relationship with the scales now is that I don't have one. If I go to the doctors and I have to stand on the scale, I'll happily stand on the scale um, and it doesn't affect me. I literally do not weigh myself at all. Not because I'm scared of it, but because I don't. And if I have to, for some reason, I will. I think it's just knowing that weight fluctuates and is a very inaccurate representation of who you are. A quote that helped me the most, I love this. So my favorite quote, and maybe it's because kind of the first quote on my quote journey, um, was a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So when I was first admitted to hospital, my mum put this on the wall in front of my bed. So every morning I woke up or I was having a meal, I would look at that quote and it'd be right in front of me. And quotes actually became a really, really important part of my recovery journey. Um, I was very lucky every night my mum would put a quote on my bed. I felt like quotes could speak the words I struggled to speak myself and I still find them really powerful and really beautiful. How do you deal with overthinking? So I'm good at this. I overthink things. I find what really is helpful is writing it all down on paper. So if I'm worrying about a few things or I'm overthinking a few things or I'm overwhelmed, writing it down can make it seem a lot less um, overwhelming and it can also help you um, with the overthinking aspect of that. So if I'm overthinking a conversation I had with someone and wondering how they responded to that, I remind myself that that's probably just me 
overthinking and that it's not the end of the world. But yeah, I often find writing things down can be really helpful. Advice on how to deal with eat your eating disorder at home after a really long admission. It's hard. It is hard. I found this too. I went from hospital to home and that transition was really difficult from having like, structured support around you to perhaps not so structured. And so what I had to do when I got home is incorporate that structure into my daily life. And I used my parents to help me with that. So I'd have a really structured day. Before I went to bed each day, I would write out my day for the next day, 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 day. So it might be like, okay, breakfast at 7.30 and then I'm going to stretch for half an hour. I don't know if I ever stretched, but that's an example. And then I'm gonna do some schoolwork, and then I'm gonna have my snack, and then I'm gonna have, um, you know, go for a walk or call a friend, and then I'm gonna have lunch. And so keeping my days really structured really helped me. And also voicing when I needed some support and some help. I was pretty good at that. And my eating disorder tried to intervene and not allow me to be good at that, but I was good at saying to my parents, hey, I'm feeling on edge, or I feel like I need to do this or that. Can you please support me through this process? So being open, honest, and creating some sense of structure and routine in your day may really help you. How does therapy help? So therapy helped me in multiple ways. No, it didn't cure me as such, it didn't save me. I had to do that work myself, but it provided me with the tools and the skills and the coping strategies and a lot of activities around anxiety and OCD and, and different techniques around eating disorders that you learn through the therapy process. A big part of therapy for me was having someone that I could pour my, I was gonna say pour my heart out to, that sounds very dramatic, that I could completely confide in and tell exactly how I was feeling and build some skills around that and ways in which I could I could work on recovery. So you go to therapy, but the work's actually done at home. And I think that's a really important thing to remind you guys is that your therapist, your dietitian, your psychiatrist, your psychologist, whatever, whoever's on your team can tell you that you should do this and you should use this strategy, et cetera, et cetera. But unless you do it, nothing's gonna change. Okay guys, thank you so much for listening to my Q&A. There are so many questions and I haven't got to all of them. I hope you found that helpful. I just wanna remind you guys that this is just my personal experience. This is what worked for me. Really, really recommend that you get some professional help on board. I will link some helplines and some services in the uh, description box below. Please like, subscribe, and I hope you guys have a beautiful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye.